Reddish egrets are fairly large, powerfully built, but elegant herons. They have long, sturdy legs, long necks, and thick, dagger-like bills. The feathers of the head and neck are often extended, giving a shaggy appearance. Adult reddish egrets have two color morphs, a rare all-white morph and a darker bluish and reddish morph. Dark morph adults have rich grayish blue bodies and a vivid pinkish cinnamon head and neck. White morph adults are snow white overall. Both morphs have two toned bills that are pink at the base and black at the tip. Unlike any other heron species, juveniles are an ashy copper color and the legs and bill are mostly dusky. When pairing up, males and females don't seem to pay attention to which morph their mate is. A single nest can have chicks of both color morphs in it. Fun fact, dark morph reddish egrets can sometimes have extensive white and feathers that would normally be gray. It's not known whether these are intermediate morphs, meaning between light and dark, partially leucistic individuals, or perhaps even hybrids with other heron species in some cases. Reddish egrets forage around salt flats, lagoons, and human-made salt pans used for making table salt. They can occasionally be found at freshwater ponds, but most of their foraging is in tidal environments, specifically at small depressions in inlets and passes, reefs and banks along barrier islands and caves, mangrove flats, lagoon systems, and salt marshes. In these areas, reddish egrets make sounds and have a call that sounds like this. Reddish egrets eat primarily small, minnow-like fish. They are active, animated foragers and employ their wings frequently when hunting, either opening the wings briefly to startle prey or by keeping the wings extended and open, probably to coax prey to take shelter in the shade of the wings. They also extend their wings fully over their head and hunt beneath the umbrella they create. This canopy feeding also attracts prey to a shaded environment and permits the egret to see prey clearly without sun glare. Rhenish egrets also use their feet to stir up sediment and flush prey, sometimes even doing this while in flight. Occasionally, they may hunt slowly and methodically, as other egrets and herons do. In Texas, where storms may wash saltwater into ponds on barrier islands, reddish egrets often hunt fish trapped in these temporary wetlands. Water depth is normally about 2 to 6 inches, often with mats of algae. Reddish egrets usually nest in lower beach vegetation, such as goldenrod, if trees are not available. The male and female select the actual nest site together, checking various branches and twigs by shaking them, probably as a communicative display more than an engineering test. The nest is usually located near the male's display site. Nests may be on bare ground or in short scrub, but are typically set in trees, often mangroves well above ground and usually over water. Nests are often within mixed species colonies of water waders. Well, there you have it, everyone. This has been everything you need to know about the reddish egret. I'm sorry it took so long to make this video. I recently just turned 18, so I've been really busy celebrating with my friends and family and getting ready for my freshman year in college. In other news, a super nice and passionate teacher recently reached out to me regarding the creation of a new educational online resource. Her goal is to assist non-traditional learners grades 3 to 6 through nature slash animal education and outdoor education to reinforce slash teach required concepts. The website is still in development, but in early August 2021, you can go to www.featherfoottrail.com if you are interested. And you'll even be able to see some of my videos on there as well. If you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and goodbye.